now at 11. Cougar sightings, where this big cat was caught creeping through front yards. Then, the showdown in Salem. We talked to the Republicans in hiding. Senator, where are you? Undisclosed location a long ways from home. And show you why a planned Senate session for tomorrow was suddenly canceled. Plus, an outbreak alert. The rare illness making dogs sick at the Oregon Humane Society. And we start with breaking news of a deadly crash that has completely shut down part of Interstate 84 for much of the evening. The crash is in the westbound lanes near 122nd Avenue. What you're looking at now is a live look from ODOT cameras. Police say that a car hit the back of a semi truck and the driver of that car has died. The major crash team is keeping the lanes blocked while they collect evidence and interview witnesses. The closure begins at 182nd, 181st Avenue. rather. No word yet when the road will reopen. We sure are going to use whatever means necessary at our disposal to try to get our uh, constituents' voices heard and respected. Eleven Oregon Republicans are in hiding tonight after walking out of a state capitol to prevent a vote on a cap and trade bill. This political fight is getting heated. A Senate session that was planned for tomorrow has been suddenly canceled. It's because lawmakers say a militia group was threatening to show up and rally at the capitol. Meanwhile, Democrats tried and failed to hold a session today, unable to get a quorum. KGW's Pat Doris was there for us. Today is Governor Kate Brown's birthday, but she did not get to celebrate it at the Capitol. A planned gathering was canceled because of the ongoing crisis. She also was not talking to the media. Things are a bit out of whack in Salem. The 11 Republicans who are supposed to be in this Senate chamber are hiding, likely out of state, to block a vote on the massive cap and trade bill. Absent a quorum, the Senate will stand in recess. The Senate tries to meet every once in a while each day now, but with no Republicans, they cannot do anything legally. Senator, where are you? Undisclosed, undisclosed location a long ways from home. I talked with the Senate Republican leader on the phone today. Has the state police been in contact with you? I did talk to the superintendent and told him that I was out of the state, but I, I, I've heard that they have been to my house. What do you think of that? Oh, I don't care. I know all the state troopers in my district. They could have called me on the phone. Bend Republican Tim Canope said he's in Idaho. Canope and other Republicans want the world to know the cap and trade bill being pushed through the legislature by Democrats would hurt people in rural parts of the state. And we just believe that uh, this bill is uh, too complicated and too expensive and will cost the jobs of our constituents in manufacturing and in timber and agriculture. And the majority Democrats have not listened to our concerns or our constituents' concerns. Democrats are furious over the move and demanding Republicans return immediately. They are saying in that, that some of them are in Idaho and that they are doing their job and following their constitutional mandate by staying away. Uh, that's just not true. If you don't like a bill in the democratic process, you go out and you get the support to oppose the bill. You don't just pick up your marbles and walk away. Pat Doris, KGW News. Let's take a closer look at the arguments for and against cap and trade, and then we'll ask you to vote. The bill would limit the amount of greenhouse gases that could be emitted and auction off emission allowances to companies. Democrats say it's a way to both help the environment and invest in rural communities adapting to climate change. But Republicans feel the Democratic supermajority is ignoring rural Oregonians' grievances. They argue cap and trade will cost too much and hurt small businesses, and they want it put to a statewide vote. In our viewer voice poll tonight, we're asking you to vote. We're asking if the cap and trade climate bill went to a vote in Oregon, would you support it? Go to kgw.com slash vote or click the viewer voice tab on your KGW app to let us know what you think. We'll check in on the results later in the newscast. Meantime, climate activists shut down the streets in front of Portland City Hall today. The group calls themselves Extinction Rebellion PDX. They were there to declare a quote climate emergency and make demands for what they call adequate action to fight climate change. They say they don't see results from politicians until they disrupt business as usual. So they moved the protest into the street and disrupted traffic for hours. We are, uh, depending on how you count, within a few years of tipping points that will make uh, civilization as we know it impossible. 
because it's gotten so hot. And nobody's saying that, and nobody's acting on that. And even when we do take measures on climate, they don't anywhere near approach the speed and scale of what has to be done. They were wanting big changes in policy to cut em uh, carbon emissions, including, among some other things, a entirely car-free downtown Portland, a reinstituted ban on new fossil fuel infrastructure, and mandatory solar roofs on all new buildings. New tonight, an uncommon but serious announcement from the Oregon Humane Society. It is halting all dog adoptions. It's because of an outbreak of the dog flu at a shelter in California that's made its way here. KGW's Mike Benner is tracking the story for us. Mike, what's going on? Well, Laurel, before staff at that California shelter noticed the outbreak, they transferred more than a dozen dogs to the Oregon Humane Society. Some of those dogs have since tested positive for the dog flu. This is an all hands on deck sort of situation at OHS. They're even consulting doctors in Wisconsin to get a better understanding of what's going on. Unusual news coming out of the Oregon Humane Society tonight. They aren't adopting out any dogs or taking in any dogs through at least the middle of next week. I have no doubt the precautions we've taken will keep this disease isolated to the dogs who were exposed. The disease the president and CEO is referring to is the dog flu. It looks as if it originated in the Bay Area. In fact, half the dogs in Oakland shelters are sick. Several have died. Unfortunately, we did have to let some go because they were so sick we couldn't recover them, but mostly we're trying to save all that we can. But before the illness was discovered in California, those Oakland shelters transferred 18 dogs to OHS. Three of those dogs tested positive for the dog flu and they were immediately quarantined. This illness isn't necessarily one that leads to fatalities. It just makes you sick. It's just like the flu that people get. And it's highly contagious. So OHS staff is moving the sick dogs off site where doctors will treat their symptoms. Um, it is some, something that has to run through their system. So we do treat them symptomatically and then they may be on medications based on any secondary infections that they could get. A plan OHS has never had to implement, at least for the dog flu, as they'll tell you, this is a first. We've never received dogs uh, that have had the flu or we've never experienced dog flu within our shelter and I'm aware of any cases in Oregon. Important to point out, even though dog adoptions and intakes are on hold, cats and other animals are still available for adoption at OHS. We're told it's very rare for cats to come down with the dog flu and other small animals never do. Dan, back to you. All right, Mike, thank you so much. From dogs to big cats, caught on camera, a cougar taking a nighttime stroll through a residential neighborhood. This is near Sandy. Someone's ring camera there giving us a pretty good glimpse. ODFW says it will post some signs in that area to warn people, but officials did tell us the parks and greenways along Sandy River Corridor are pretty good habitat for cougars, which means that sightings like this aren't all that uncommon. There are no reports of any animals being attacked by cougars in that area. Days after search crews found the bodies of a Salem mother and her young son, their accused killer was back in court. Michael Wolf made a short video appearance from jail today. He said nothing. Wolf was already charged with the murders of Carissa and Billy Fretwell. Prosecutors say now that they've found their bodies, they have a much stronger case. Wolf is facing charges of aggravated murder and kidnapping. If convicted, he faces life in prison, possibly even the death penalty. The DA hasn't decided yet if he will pursue that. The Portland Police Bureau is lowering its standards for hiring new officers. Essentially, they've just been having a tough time filling positions and finding people who want to work for the Bureau. Right now, there are nearly 130 vacancies there. So starting next month, recruits will only need a high school diploma or GED to qualify for the job. That matches state requirements. PPB used to require the equivalent of an associate's degree. I think really when we think of police officers, the most important thing that we could seek for a police officer is for that person to be a person of character. Right? We want high integrity, high morals. We want the ability for them to be introspective. To learn. The Bureau is also considering allowing officers to have neck tattoos and beards. Both are banned right now. Coming up, the 13-year-old umpire caught between brawling Little League parents in Colorado speaks out about the viral fight. I was scared not only for me, but the seven-year-olds that happened to still be on the field at the time. What he has to say for the parents who started throwing punches. Plus, the mystery of D.B. Cooper has captivated people for decades. Now you can put on your detective cap, try to find some clues yourself. 
I'm Matt Safino. Spring ended with clouds this morning and then summer began with sunshine for sunset. And tomorrow will be much the same with the pleasant temperatures. And why does my tie match this graphic? I'll let you know after the break.